everybody. We're going to continue our class. Uh, this is on clipper blades and some of the very specific things that can go wrong, um, whether they, again, are an end user using this or a sharpener that's trying to help take care of the condition. Um, what we're going to look at are the spring tension and the springs that are involved, and that'll also involve the guide. Um, we will actually end up grabbing another piece here in a little bit that we can show on that. But when, whenever we have a spring condition, it's typically either going to be one, it obviously could be correct, um, but most commonly we're going to run into a spring that's either too tight or too loose. And so we're going to, I made some examples here so that we could see what that looks like. And so if I came in and I've got my tension testing tool and I lay that over the blade, I'm going to be very careful not to pinch the spring because obviously that would be cheating and it would raise the tension. So I'm just going to hold in a way that I'm not going to affect the tension. When I push this in, we're going to watch the rivet move forward that's right here in the device and it has a chart. Now that chart itself, the red zone starts or finishes up here at two and a half pounds. There's a yellow zone that's going to be from two and a half to two and three quarter. The green zone, that's our best area, which is that two and three quarters to three and a quarter. So right in the middle of that's going to be three pounds. And then we're going to find another yellow zone, three and a quarter to three and a half, and then we go back to red. Now, the different areas of what we've come up with here over time is that if we're down in that lower region, it's really easy to get comb and cutter separation. So it doesn't even have to be that dense of a coat in the dog or a person. And the, if you get a separation between the two, it's like loosening the screw on your scissors. And now it wants to fold that hair or fur and um, grab it. And so we don't want that. So that's why we don't want to be below that in the chart. Then we go into our nice area in the middle, which gives us good separation strength so that we, have, we won't let, allow the comb and cutter to come apart. And also, we haven't gone to excessive friction where we're super tight and it's hard for the clipper to move it, which gets us to that red zone at the top. At that point, we're starting to make the wear parts on the clipper work too hard, so the blade drives and levers, things like that, and that can cause premature wear out of those pieces, along with if we are moving at a, you know, three or four thousand strokes per minute, um, it's kind of like the Boy Scout or Girl Scout that's out in the woods trying to take two sticks and make a fire. Well, we're going to have a really hot blade really fast, and that's going to be a problem for the customer. Because one, they're just not going to have any working time where they can work with the tool. So let's look at this first blade, and we're going to push against it. And again, try not to push anywhere on the blade with my hand to affect it. What will happen is, as I start to push, you can see the cutter move. But my gauge in here didn't. So that's telling us that this is very light. It's under, probably under one pound of tension. And the type of tension we're even talking about is coefficients of slide friction. In other words, how much energy will it take to force this into a, a movement? Um, and we, we talk about those types of frictions when we are making these adjustments. If we go to another extreme, we're going to take another blade up here, and we're going to push against it, same way we did the last one. Now notice, we come all the way up and the blade didn't move at all. So we went from too light to too strong. I'm not sure, I didn't check this one yet. Let's see where it falls on the chart. Just to give us another example. That one also is very tight. So we've got a lot of good examples here of what's wrong. Get another one here. And that one's very tight. Alright, so that is going to give us some good options. There's one more blade I had laying here. Let's see what it says. Oh, now that one, if you notice, it actually was into that yellow area of the chart when it started to slip almost even right there in the green. I'm going to spin this around, check it from both directions. So that one, we wouldn't have to do much adjustment. And notice it was lighter that time, way down into the yellow. Yeah, just barely touching the green. So that'll give us an example of one that we can make some adjustments side to side. Why do you think it would have good tension in one direction and lighter from the other side? That is a great question. All right, here is our example. 
if I take the cutter out of the way and we just look at the, the guide itself and how the spring is sitting, we can notice that right here, this dimension is closer on this side and much further away here. So that is almost double the gap. So what would happen is, oh, keep knocking that off. And that's, that's actually the plastic piece. That is our guide that I keep mentioning. And that is just a plastic or nylon track um, to eliminate friction as it moves in the V-rail of the cutter. This early, this little area right here. But if you notice, one side's very high, the other is low. So when we would push against that with our tension tool against the cutter, we're really testing the far leg away from us. And so that extra pinch on this side would have higher tension. And when we turn it around to the side like this and we push, we're really testing the leg on the far side. So it was a red flag to us that one side over the other was wrong. And we can go ahead, in this case, and first attempt to bend this using a pair of pliers. And actually, let me grab this one. And what I want to show you is that I put a bread mark on the plier. Um, when I squeeze down, what I want that to be is that that red mark is over this loop area of the spring, right here in the back. That's our strengthening area, and that's how we would bend this without taking it apart. We would try to see if in a scrunch, we could bring this back, uh, hope, I don't know if you can see this with our lighting, to where we have a more even gap in between the two to the comb. If we were way out there, now we're closer. I'll squeeze it just a little bit more to even it out. Oh, get out of the camera. So I'm squeezing with both hands, trying to get that. If I didn't have enough strength to do that, I could bring in a bigger pair of pliers, give me more leverage and squeeze a little bit more. Now when we come back up here and look, we're both just barely touching at the, uh, the comb of the blade. And so we have brought that back around even. Let's look at the one where we actually saw that tension was off. And here again, we can see we're touching fairly tight right here on this side, and we have a gap over here on this side. And it's lifted up just so slightly, but that was what was giving us that difference in tension. There's another way to adjust that back down, and it, we can use a tool like this. It's made by Wolf Industries. Um, it has a slot in it and a T-handle. And in this case, instead of coming back into the loop to bend, we're going to actually come up here in the front bogey of the, of the spring. This area, uh, if we go ahead and twist forward, we're going to come just behind the crown of that bend so that when we twist, oop, it jumps like that. If I get too far forward, I want to get just behind it so that it doesn't slip, and I'm going to put a little twist into it and make it so that we have snugged that up the same on both sides parallel to the comb. Now, if we did a good job with that, remember this one also was just a little bit weak, so it's probably going to be a good idea to come up a little bit on both sides. So just a little, <coughs> just a little bit of a twist. I'm going to put this back down here so we can see this. I'm going to push my screwdriver in underneath the spring just enough to where we fit. I don't want to release all the tension that we just created. I'm also going to just lift it up as I go across so that I don't accidentally peel off any of the plastic or nylon from our guide. I'm going to come back, recheck, and now we're right in the middle of the green that direction. We'll come back over here. A little bit on the high side. So I'm just going to release a little tiny bit of tension. I'm going to do it with my screwdriver again. The easiest place to reach in is right here in the middle, underneath the cutter. And when we do that, we're just twisting the screwdriver slightly and trying to make it release evenly on both sides. So that's on the upper side of green. I'll turn it around here. 
and we're again upper side of green almost to the yellow. That's getting me within tolerance and uh, I'm going to go ahead and run this blade. We'll do a test on it if we've sharpened it and then double check that um, it actually is going to uh, stay within the tension range that we want. Um, in the history of what we were doing, uh, when we got one of these where it was super tight, and remember again we'll look at that, we're up here where it doesn't even move as far as the cutter. So I'm going to go ahead and release some of that tension, but we would run into this a lot and we don't have to take it apart to release tension. So we'll just twist that a little bit and see if that's any change. We're still up here really tight, so we're not getting enough movement. So I'm going to take my screwdriver in here just above where the loop is. And I mean, again, I'm just going to twist. I'm going to come around the other side because we're tight both directions. And twist upward. And what that's doing is it's making that loop a little bit bigger again. Come in here and recheck. Okay, now upper green is when it tripped. Other side, spin that around here. Upper green, so we've brought that well within the margin of where we need it. Um, so that, it's that easy when we need to release tension. Now this was our sample, I believe. I'll check it. Oh, that was up there tight again. So now I got to figure out which one was our loose one. Oh, well that was easy to find. Okay, so we're going to set our tool down. We have too much um, release of the spring, and so we're getting a lot of easy movement for the cutter. That's going to easily separate from the comb. I'm going to re remove it. Um, if it's in the way and we try to bend anything, it's actually going to release more tension. We're going to damage it because it's going to be bending up while we're trying to force it down. Again, one of the ways we could solve this would be to pinch back here at the loop. Um, we used to do that solely. Um, one of the issues we ran into is that when people would take and bend these at the loop, and they would come in with their pliers, they would get a hold up here like this and squeeze. And it's kind of like the uh, diving board at the pool, kind of a nice little spring to it. What happened is, a lot of times you would get a temporary increase in tension, because what was happening is you would bend it right here where it's the weakest. There's a nice big hole here, and we would just kind of get a C shape out of that right up in here. And now when you went to put that back on the clipper, it was tighter. And then as soon as it warmed up and cooled down a few times in use, um, it actually dropped the tension away. It might even be worse than what we've started with because we've actually stretched the metal and damaged it. So one of the reasons we have the paint on this one was to show that that is supposed to be right over the loop. Now that's the strongest part of the hinge, and, but we would need to go ahead and get it to collapse slightly and reshape this round area of the spring. Spring steel is kind of a creative thing in that if you don't change its shape, it actually will not hold a new memory. And then when we go back and, like I said, we warm it and cool it, it'll return to that memory or beyond. So this is how we would position this type of plier, not up here where we would just grip the tip and get that springboard action, we actually need to make it collapse here. Well, what I found over time, as we do both sides separately, um, and our staff would do this, um, we were really inconsistent about how we did it. So what we would do is we'd force it <coughs> um, way too tight for what we were trying to do. Now, what then happens is we're in the condition like we had just a minute ago, and we would have to release the tension. Why is that a, you know, a big deal? Well, it worked quite well, but now we're in that condition where we've now tightened the spring and now we released it and we're creating metal fatigue. And so over time, we actually could basically wear out that spring, not intentionally, but just through how we're bending it back and forth. So that's kind of a problem. And uh, later in the life of this, somebody came up with this concept with the slot. Now, Wolf Industries is one of the companies that then made this tool. We do sell these in our store. And again, the idea is we grip it just behind that arc so that we can then twist and bring it back in. Now what happens 
if I come up here to grip this, and I'll do it on one that's assembled. And that was the other thing is, the nice thing is it made our assembly faster. Um, we could actually just get everything together, check the tension quick. If it's too heavy, we released it. If it's too light, we grab the tool, move the cutter out of the way, and then come in here and do the bend. So we'll come in, find that spot where it grips, go back just a little bit more there. And then we're going to spin it. There, I got it right. Until we get just a little bit of a bend, and we're going to do that on both sides. And we haven't really affected the shape of the spring. Some of the import units, you'll notice, when I go to twist like that, it would take out this bend. It would actually straighten out the whole spring. That's kind of a problem, because now it has problems with clearance with the clipper. So we just want to do a little bit. But one of the things that happened with our staff is that if we get in here and we're in a hurry, and we start twisting without this all the way down in the slot, you can see where our slot would bottom out. We want to get that fully inserted. If you're out here, it's like taking two legs and twisting on them. And when that happens, we can end up breaking off one leg. At a minimum, over time, what we'll start doing is we're going to start wearing the slot even bigger. So if we have either of these conditions and it's not working for us anymore, um, we don't throw this away. Um, we just take our Dremel tool with a cutoff wheel and we'll cut this top off and then cut a new slot. And so we can use these until they get about down here about a half inch from the handle and then our handle's in the way to grip it and be able to still use it. But we have them where they start out this long. You can see this one's already been recut maybe twice to get it down to where it's at and it's been broken again and uh, we'll fix it. Um, there's other ways possibly you could make a slotted tool so you can be as creative as you'd like to be but this allows us again to make these adjustments while the blade is still assembled and I don't have to reset anything. Um, our next class will cover some of that setback um, that could be changed when we do a bend but in general that's a simple little twist that we're going to do and I'm going to get my guide back in. It decided to jump out of the slot and I'm just going to put it in front of the tang on the spring and come back behind here, raise it just enough so that'll tip down on there. It's that easy to put back in. Now I'm going to take, again, put my screwdriver in just enough to raise it, help it across. Why didn't I want to raise it more? Well, because I'd release the tension that I just put in. Now I'm going to come back and recheck our tension, see if we did any good. So we're on the upper side of green right there. I'm going to spin it around, get my hold so I don't cheat myself. And we're at the upper green again. So just that little twist, we have a perfect set on the tension. We're on the upper side of green. So once it warms up and cools down, if it does release a little bit of the memory uh, back to a new spot, we will should be able to stay easily in the green part of the chart and know that we've got a perfect blade ready to use uh, through the life of that sharpening. All right, that is most everything with springs. Um, I will show you one thing, I guess. Um, over here, this is the Andis brand spring, and notice what they tried to do. They put an extra band of metal out here, a little tab, and when they did that, it strengthens where the hole is. And so that was their whole purpose is that over time, we wouldn't get weak because of this big hole. And so if you compare the two, you can see that one has that extra bit of metal, the other doesn't. Um, how could that ever cause a problem for us? Well, between different brands out there, these are pretty universal. Um, but one of the problems we can run into is if there's just a couple thousands difference in the spread of the socket, so this dimension from where the holes are, that's where our threads are, if that was closer together, it would, it would then cause our spring to move closer together in order to fit. If these move in too far, now these two little wings are going to catch the tongue on the clipper and not let it fit in there. And that could cause it to get stuck before it actually slides all the way on. So little things like that that affect our tolerances. Um, so that may make a different decision for you when you're going to replace a spring that won't cooperate. Uh, in other words, we can, no matter what we do, it goes, we make it really tight, and then as soon as we try to loosen it, it goes way too light, 
and we're going back and forth, we know that that spring steel is worn out, and we go to replace it. Well, we might need to grab a spring that matches the brand at which we are going to work on. One last thing that I'm going to show before we're done with this is sometimes we're going to get a spring, and when you touch it on, the, on a flat surface, maybe we better move over, it's more centered in our camera, uh, but if we come in here, and we can see how this is tipping in the action. And we think, well, that's really bent. How do I fix that condition? Realistically, all it is is that this front rail that connects the two sides is in a twist. It's better to have that sitting nice and even when we go to put it back together, because again, that extra twist could affect how it's going to lay once we get this together. We're a little closer, but we still have a little bit of uneven contact. It's getting even better. Went too far. So again, this isn't hard, but we want to find that little balance there. Now it's sitting almost perfectly flat to the surface. When I push down, it may be a tiny bit of movement, but it's really close compared to where we started. And now when we tighten the screws down, that's going to give us our best result. We've gone through an awful lot of things around how to adjust spring tension today in this demo. And one more unique approach is a product that we had made that can help you a lot. Make it simple. Keep it simple. That, you know, is always important. I'm going to show you right here a blade that is light in tension. So you can see we're still in the red when it slid. Everybody see that? Do it one more time. Right there. So we're just barely moving. And well, some of us really struggle to get that spring tension brought up to where it should be. So what I'm going to show is I'm just going to take the cutter out and remove the factory guide from inside. There's that original piece. And I'm going to replace it with one of our high tension guides, these gray ones right here. And in this case, a little tricky to get it in there sometimes, but I'm just going to put it kind of in front of the spring and roll it up into place until I get it to slide onto the tongue of the spring. Of course, it'll cooperate right away. I'll show you. Sometimes it wants to pop on in there. I don't see it. I'll struggle a little bit, just like you will. Get it on the tongue. Just raise it up enough to get that into the slot. Now, of course, you can always take the blade apart to do this, but that takes more time. The idea is to keep this simple. So there, it snapped into place. We can see that's in there. I'm going to go ahead and take the cutter, slide it back in. So the only thing we've done is changed the guide. By changing that, now we're going to see where our tension is. Look at that, right into the green. So, again, very simple way to boost tension without doing any bending on the spring and make the job very simple. We have those available in our store, whether it be on our website or calling in um, an order. If you want pricing, be sure and contact us. Again, appreciate your attention. Uh, again, again, this is very important to the setup of a clipper blade. And uh, if, again, if you enjoyed this and had uh, this helped you with some of your information you're trying to gain, uh, follow our channel, um, subscribe where you can on like YouTube, uh, like, like the video if you're on one of the other mediums, and we appreciate you being part of the class.